This is Mario Andretti, and you are listening to Below the Yellow Line. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Below the Yellow Line. Welcome to a post-duel edition of Below the Yellow Line. The Daytona duels are over. Tyler Reddick, the winner of Duel 1, Christopher Bell, the winner of Duel 2. We know who's in the Daytona 500, Jimmy Johnson. He's one of them, as is Kaz Gralla. We also know where these guys will start for Sunday's running. I'm not going to try to decipher the whole starting lineup. Uh, you know, We'll do that in the Daytona 500 pre-race show tomorrow, but um, it's set at least. Uh, but you know what else should be set? The Wicked Mix or Wicked Minis on your coffee table for the Daytona 500. If you're looking for a snack, a race day snack, not just for Daytona, but for throughout the 2024 NASCAR season, grab yourself some Wicked Mix or Wicked Menus today at MoonlightMixes.com. They're the perfect race day snack combination and companion to snack on throughout the 2024 NASCAR season. Let's throw our Duel 1 results up on the screen and hop right into it here. These duels, first and foremost, let me say this. Uh, this was really good racing tonight. Um you know, most of the time in duels, I feel like it's typically pretty laid back. The, you know, sometimes it turns into a choo-choo train. I'm sure we'll see that Sunday a little bit. Um, just how modern plate racing is. These guys want to hang back, you know, see where the wind blows, see how their cars drive. Uh, tonight, though, they saw how their cars drive in traffic. They, they got plenty of a glimpse of that, I think. Um and it led to a big win in Duel 2, but for the most part, these guys raced clean. Now, there was a few moves towards the end that, you know, maybe they weren't the nicest, but dude, it's Daytona. It's coming down the stretch to win a race at the World Center of Racing. You know, we'd all do the same exact thing. So, um, really good racing tonight. And uh, I think a pretty good prelude to Daytona. I think a pretty good, uh, pretty positive indication of what we'll see Sunday or maybe Monday <laughs> with what the weather looks like at this rate. Hopefully that weather clears up a little bit. So dual one, I didn't get to see the first half of this race, uh, but Tyler Reddick gets the win. Let's talk about that first. A couple issues on pit road. Martin Truex stalled out, lost the draft. Uh, and you also had a speeding penalty for Ross Chastain. Um, but Tyler Reddick wins this race, got clear of Alex Bowman down on the inside, or not Bowman, uh, Elliot, maybe. I think there was 300 cars right there. And then Tyler Reddick just comes in and splits up the party. But Reddick gets clear, goes to the inside of Kyle Larson. Larson had a chance to battle back and would have had a chance to race him off four, race him into the tri-oval. Then Alex Bowman got to the back pumper of Larson, got him a little loose, sent him up the hill, sent him back to ninth place ultimately. Surprised it wasn't worse. And uh, Tyler Reddick's able to go off right off into the sunset and win dual one. But that wasn't the biggest story, at least not in my opinion. That would be Jimmy Johnson making the 2024 Daytona 500. And I picked him in. I said he's going to qualify in on speed. I felt confident about seven time making the field. And then Toyota looked like crap in qualifying. And then Toyota turned up the wick tonight in the duels. And every Toyota fan out there, or every fan of a Toyota driver or team, should be pretty confident on Sunday. And for all super speedways, you know, based on tonight. And, you know, try not to overreact to one race, to one 150-mile race. But Toyota was darn fast. Of course, they won both duels. Denny Hamlin had a chance to win duel two. Uh, Bubba Wallace, if he wasn't involved in the big win a little bit, probably would have had a chance to win dual tool as well. He looked really good for a majority of that race, led a lot of laps. Uh, but Toyota came to play, and Jimmy Johnson um, was coasting to making the Daytona 500. It was going to be a long shot anyways for J.J. Yaley, who just found out he was driving this car on Tuesday. There was a whole deal with New York Racing. Apparently, they didn't pay Greg Biffle. That's why the Biff's not in the car. And uh, Yaley did a pretty admirable job, to be fair. J.J. Yaley drove the heck out of that car tonight and was very close to making the Daytona 500, was very close to beating out another J.J., not some old guy off the street, but Jimmy Johnson, a two-time Daytona 500 winner, an 83-time Cup Series race winner, and a guy who's won seven NASCAR Cup Series championships. So that's got to make him feel good. Didn't, you know, came up a little short of the goal in the end, ultimately. And I know he'll be disappointed by that. 
because uh, he's a competitor. He's a racer. It's in his blood. But J.J. Ailey, hats off to you. Jimmy Johnson echoed the same sentiments. We saw those two Wiley vets uh, have a moment of mutual respect there. Jimmy shaking Ailey's hand. And um, that's really cool, right? Because it just shows that respect. It shows uh, what those two know that that means for each other. Uh, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat there for Ailey. So that was really neat to see. But Jimmy Johnson, man, great move. Just went through the middle. Textbook, you know, crafty vet stuff, stuff that you'd expect from a guy like Jimmy Johnson, stuff that you'd expect from guys of his caliber, his experience um, to make, you know, to make those moves. And he made the moves when it counted. And he was coasting, right, until Daniel Hemrick wrecked right in front of him. Austin Dillon spun down into him. And, um, he had a little bit of damage, not that much damage, but enough where you're kind of like, oh, okay, his hopes are kind of in jeopardy. And then, you know, ultimately he ends up fine, you know, ends up ends up in 12th place. Yaley in 16th, um, as we see the last of those results scroll on your screen there. So Duel 1, good race. I thought Duel 2 was slightly better in terms of racing. They kind of race a little bit more right from the start there from what I heard. Um, so let's get into Duel 2. A little bit. Let's put those results on the screen now. Christopher Bell, both races, the uh, the winner led only the last lap. How many times have you heard that at a super speedway race or at the Daytona 500 in recent years? The winner led only the last lap. It was a Toyota making a last lap pass for the win both times. This time, Bell on Austin Sindrick and and Austin Sindrick, Harrison Burton. They had a chance. The two, you know, basically young guns at Penske were teamed up right there. Had a chance. Cindric ended up blocking Burton below the yellow line. You know, <laughs> we'll see uh, if NASCAR rules anything on that because as he did, uh, Cindric did go below the yellow line. I think he might have made a pass, or maybe they the rule he blocked Burton down there, and that's a penalty. I don't know. It would only really shake up the the starting grid, but not just for Cindric. It it affect him the most, but everybody else will move up a spot or two. So that's how it would affect that. Um, I haven't heard anything yet as to them making a call. It's been about 20, 25 minutes uh, since the checkered flag flew. I guess we could check one quick time here on the on the old Twitterverse to see if anything's happening. And it doesn't look like anything is as far as a penalty. So, uh, you know, um, all good there on, on, on those fronts. All quiet on the Western front there. Um, Chase Elliott. Uh, or that's duel number one still. That's not very helpful. Duel number two, um, Penske was close. Denny Hamlin was close. He threw a block, though, that was way too over-aggressive. He did really well managing this race until those last few laps, uh, or to the last lap, really, I thought. And then he made a block way too aggressive, took way too much momentum up the hill, didn't have help, and or, or down the hill, didn't have help, and Bell was able to pull away. Uh, from him, and I thought Hamlin was his most formidable competition because he looked like he had the best car. He charged all the way up from 19th after he, like every other Toyota, qualified terribly last night and just made an over-aggressive move, and it cost him the win in this race. Not a move you see Denny Hamlin make very often. Not a mistake you see Denny Hamlin make very often. Um, the big qualifying story for this race was Kaz Grawla versus B.J. McLeod. B.J. McLeod, like many underdogs, drove a great race in this race. We saw Zane Smith. We saw Riley Herbst leading laps. Um, Hosevar was up there in Duel 1, but the underdogs in this race were the big stars. Zane Smith. Um, we saw Herbst leading laps. We saw Gregson up there for, for a decent period of time. He can be considered a big underdog. And then B.J. McLeod was running third on speed. I thought he might lose the draft. He was horribly off last night in qualifying, but like a second, a second and a half, maybe like the Toyotas, he came prepared for the duel, for race pace. And if so, it paid off. And, and you know, only a 14th place finish, in, and ultimately he did miss the Daytona 500, uh, but it paid off um, because he was competitive, you know. He had a great shot to make the Daytona 500, and I think if you told him at the end of the night, it'd come down to less than a tenth of a second, He'd take those odds, and he could be proud of that, you know, whether or not he won it. Um, so Grala gets in by the skin of his teeth. Grala lost the draft. He had a pit road speeding penalty. Pit road again caught some of these guys. He had a speeding penalty, um, had to serve that. Um, and then, or maybe that wasn't it. Oh, he had a slow pit stop. That's what it was. Zane Smith. Uh, had the speeding penalty, so two pit road issues in each duel. Pit road uh, could be a big factor Sunday in the Daytona 500. 
Uh, but the biggest story of this race was the big one, the big wreck that happened. Ryan Blaney, I've seen a lot of things from him. TV interview, his radio interview was pretty wild, had some had some language in there. Um, he was not happy. He got uh, he got wrecked, not intentionally, but William Byron to the outside of him, side drafting, a push gone wrong, and he's in the wall. William Byron somehow finished top 10 in this race, but as you'll see in a second when I put those results on screen, there you go. Blaney did not. He ends up 18th, along with Josh Berry, Riley Herbst, Kyle Busch crashes out of a duel for the second year in a row. Noah Gregson in his return to NASCAR, return to Daytona, and technically a points race because there are points paid in this race, uh, finishes last. That's indicative of a lot so far in young Gregson's career. Uh, but just unfortunate, you know, other guys were involved in that. Bubba Wallace, who I mentioned, finishes 11th, not bad, but led a lot of laps in this race was very fast and um scott spun in that wreck haley finishes 10th rick Ware, pretty fast tonight pretty competitive in these first couple uh exhibitions between the clash and the duels here so we'll see what they bring sunday and for the rest of the season um you also had uh who else was involved in that i'm trying to see here byron obviously got spun still finished top 10 uh kozlowski was bunched up in that a little bit uh, Gregson, Herbs, unfortunately, see a lot of good cars taken out in that. But Blaney, man, trying to win the Daytona 500. This wasn't the Daytona 500, obviously. Um, so frustrated, though, to get taken out like that. Uh, and I understand that. So, I mean, it's not going to change. You know, the way these guys race in these duels isn't going to change at all. Uh, or in any super speedway race is not going to change. You know, they're going to be aggressive. But, uh, Maybe they need to be less aggressive. I didn't even remember Chase Briscoe's in this race. He finished his ninth. Good for him. John Hunter Nemechek, horrible in qualifying again last night, but finishes fourth. Uh, Harrison Burton, pretty solid super speedway racer. P5 tonight. Uh, but I thought Hamlin just made an overaggressive move, and that's what gave Bell the win. Uh, Grala, barely enough to beat out McLeod. And, um, and the big one. This classic Daytona man. Uh, so those are the storylines. That is how it went down tonight. Daytona 500 pre-race tomorrow. Truck post-race tomorrow. Xfinity post-race tomorrow. Daytona 500 post-race Sunday. Hopefully from the track. And uh, if not, well, Monday. We'll bring you all the coverage here on the Below the Align YouTube channel and all major podcast platforms. Like, subscribe, comment, share on YouTube, rate, review, follow on Spotify, follow on Apple Podcasts, support us on Patreon, patreon.com backslash below the Align podcast. Read my articles on speedwaymedia.com and at yardbarker.com, bringing you up to the minute coverage on yardbarker.com of all things Dade Sona and uh, moonlightmixes.com to get your Wicked Mix and Wicked Minis just in time at the start of the 2024 NASCAR season. I am Samuel Subs from below the Align. From below the line. Sorry, see me here tomorrow to recap the truck race tomorrow night and preview the Daytona 500. Goodbye.